Greetings, brethren. I want to pass along some insight, some wisdom, some encouragement to you, my fellow saint. I want to do my part and fulfill my calling in equipping whomever may hear this and reminding you of a truth that is so easy to forget. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, it reads, To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of men to be exercised in it. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. And in Psalm chapter 31, verse 15, My times are in thy hand. My times are in thy hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. There is a time and a purpose to everything. There is a season and a time to every purpose under the sun. And for those who follow the Lord and even for those who don't follow the Lord, our times are in his hands. Brethren, you and I would benefit so greatly, and not just you and I, but all those who are surrounded, all those who are around us, would benefit greatly if we could manage to get in tune, to get in harmony with God's timing. So often, we can rely on our own understanding. We can strive according to our flesh in an attempt to bring to pass what we want or even at times what we know is God's will, but we're trying to bring it to pass in our own strength, in our own efforts, by our own methods, and in our own time. Because we think things ought to happen at a certain time or at a certain juncture. But you know, I sit here right now as one who has been guilty over and over again in the past of rushing, being too eager, but also of having a slack hand, of not being ready and willing to move with God in His time, afraid to move forward, you understand. And so in one sense, you and I, we can be too eager. And in another time, 
we can be not eager enough. And both are tragic and both are wrong. Both can lead to destruction. Both have the potential, and they will, to steal your joy, your peace, your purpose, your vision, your ability to see what's before you, your ability to see afar off, your foresight, being too eager, getting ahead of God, can lead to calamity, can lead to torment and lack of peace and lack of joy, lack of purpose, and uh, can lead to confusion. Likewise, not being eager enough can also lead to a void of peace and joy, torment, confusion. Which is worse? I don't know. But you see, I've been on both sides of that coin. And I know what it's like on both sides of that coin. <coughs> One person can be too eager. Another person cannot be eager enough. And yet, at times, we can be like both. We can be guilty of both of those scenarios. And truly, truly, it doesn't matter which one of those scenarios we may find ourselves in at times. The reality is, they're essentially both the same sin. And what sin would that be? The sin of unbelief. Not trusting in God. You're not eager enough to move forward. You're afraid to move forward. Why? It's because you don't trust God. Because you rely too much on your own understanding. Your own self-will. Likewise, if you're too eager to move forward, if you're trying to get ahead of God, it is also unbelief. Because you don't trust in God's timing. You don't believe that God knows what He's doing. You don't believe that God's going to bring it to pass in His time. They're both destructive, and they're both a result of unbelief and leaning on your own understanding. Now, as someone who has been on both sides of that coin, who at times has been running to do something that the Lord was saying, slow down, boy, and at times when the Lord has saying, move, move, go now. I was like, uh, uh, I don't know. I know what can happen as a result of falling into either one of those ditches. And so listen, you and I have got to develop an understanding of God's times and seasons. We've got to be able to discern these things. And truly, the only way that you and I are going to be able to do that is to be close to Him, to get to know Him, to observe His tendencies and His ways, to stay in prayer, to remain connected to the vine. This takes work. Did you say work? Oh, man. Oh, Brother Mark, talking about work. Oh, man. Man, I thought we weren't saved by works. Well, we're not saved by the works of the flesh, no. But listen. To maintain your faith. To maintain your relationship with the Most High God. It takes some work. It takes some effort. It takes some intentional some intentional effort on our part whether you like it or not and so brethren you and I have got to get in harmony in synchronization in unity with God and with his timing you see God is right there in the middle between being too eager and not eager enough he's above and in between 
both of those errors. And it's up to you and I. It, we need to press in and go on to know the Lord and so we can be in harmony with His time. My times are in His hand. Listen to me. You and I can trust the One who has spoken into existence every molecule, every atom, every cell, every law which governs this natural material universe. The one who maintains it all and upholds it all by the word of his power. You and I, we can trust him. Listen to me. Look at Jesus Christ. When you read about people who were afflicted with various types of ailments and infirmities. For instance, the woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years. She spent so much money on physicians in an attempt to heal this issue. And she could not, but only got worse. Listen, that's an impossible situation according to man. That was a hopeless situation. But that woman, listen, she knew that if she could just reach out and touch Jesus, if she could just make contact with Him, everything would change. And that's exactly what happened. Jesus fixed it. A man possessed by devils, a maniac, a lunatic, they couldn't even bind him up with chains because he kept breaking him loose. Dwelling in the tombs, butt naked. Crying out, screaming daily, tormented by these wicked spirits. No doubt, the culture, the people, the town, had given up on this guy. But when he encountered Jesus Christ, and Jesus cast those devils out, the man was sitting in his right mind and in his right mind, the scripture said. Listen to me. The one who told the wind and the waves to hush and be still, and it did. We can trust him. We can believe him. We can rely on him. He has come through for me over and over and over again. <clears throat> I have no reason to doubt him. Yet I know when we go through the hard times, when we go through the trials and the afflictions and the tests and the things that challenge our faith, it's, I understand, it's very difficult. You want to try to take things into your own hands because you think somehow you can do it better. When all you got to do is look back into your history and see what happens when you put your hands on things. All you got to do is think back just a week and realize that when you and I try to take certain things into our hand, it gets worse. Listen we've got to realize that we can trust Him. In fact, it's a command, brethren. So listen, to everything, there is a season. For every purpose under the heaven, there is a time. And our times are in His hands. And you and I, we need to become in tune with Him. We need to harmonize with Him. We need to get tuned in to the same frequency as Him. So that we're not striving about in the flesh, being tormented in our mind as to, oh, is this the will of God? Is this the time? Is that the time? When? When? How? All this stuff. No, brethren, I can't even tell you how to make it happen. You know? 
each his own, you must get close to the Lord. You must discover his ways for yourself. But this one thing I know, he makes all things beautiful in his time. In his time. Because it's the right time. Listen, we're talking about somebody who knows everything. Come on. Come on. Do you stop and think about God and realize that he knows everything? He knows every scenario. The thoughts of every single human being on the face of the earth, man. He knows what's going to happen. He knows when is the right time. He knows the, sick, the circumstances that have to form and change for things to come to pass. We don't. We think we do. We think we know what's best. We think we understand. But listen, brethren, we don't. And you and I need to learn to harmonize, to get in synchronization with God, with His timing, with His timing. And all this reminds me of a beautiful song. And no, I'm not a beautiful singer, but I don't care. It says, it goes like this. In his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful in his time. Lord, please show me every day As you're teaching me your ways That you do just what you say In your time In your time In your time You make all things beautiful in your time Lord my life to you I bring may each song I have to sing be to you a lovely thing in your time listen God himself is outside of time and space he is not bound by time but you understand that God, in his dealings with us, uses time. And f because you and I are bound in time and space here, God must deal with us in time. And so, he makes all things beautiful in his time. So brethren, don't be too eager and try to get ahead of God. It will steal your peace, it will steal your joy, it will steal your ability to see afar off. It will steal your sense of purpose and it will bring confusion. And brethren, don't be too afraid, too hesitant. Don't lack the right amount of eagerness to be doing the will of God. Because if you lag behind and you're afraid to move forward, and you can't sense God's time to do this now, then you also will suffer a loss of peace and joy and the ability to see afar off and you will have confusion and torment and hardness you understand because you'll be out of sync out of harmony so I can't stress it enough you and I need to learn to wait on the Lord but we also need to move when he says to move And the only way we can accomplish this synchronicity is to be close with Him, to be one with Him, to abide in Him and Him in us, and keep our eyes fixed upon Him. Grace and peace unto you, my brethren.